Fuck social media. Fuck it. Seriously. I'm done with it. I'm done with social media. But not entirely. I'm done just with my personal account because it's just not working. At least not now. Excuse me. I want peace from my neighbor. I don't want my neighbors to be with their nose all up in my business. <laughs> Fuck social media. Hello guys, my name is Francesca and today I will tell you why I decided to quit social media as a content creator, artist, photographer. If you don't know that about me, I've been drawing since I was four years old and I've been doing photography since I was like 50 years old. Then my next hobby was Darbuka percussion. It's been six months since I practiced Darbuka. been just extremely creative on social media. I just spent a lot of time thinking about my feed, doing a very aesthetic feed. I had three accounts, my personal account, my photography account, and my art account. I've opened the art and photography accounts when I was very, in a very dark period of my life. I had an esophageal injury. I won't go into that. I felt very happy sharing my art and photography on social media for a while. This lasted just two years, I think. The past year from March 2023 to this month, March 24, social media has become such a burden for me. You might ask yourself why I decided to quit and I'm sure that you expect the normal answers like, oh, I started to become addicted, I was spending too much time, and this was the case too. But for me, as someone who has complex post-traumatic stress disorder and OCD, it got just worse than that. The first reason was that some of my posts got banned, specifically on TikTok, one of them, and on Instagram. I started to get less and less engagement because of this one thing. I posted about Palestinians from Gaza. I posted about their suffering because every day when I open social media, especially Instagram, I got bombarded with very, very disturbing videos of killed children from Palestine. And of course, I decided to share the videos from the journalist because oh, it was extremely hard for them. It was extremely hard for those people to cover that. Like, imagine, I don't know if we re really live in a democracy. I think we really started to get back to communism because what this Zionist country does is just silencing the other party and pretending to be the victim and acting just like my narcissistic father, for real. And the fact that influencers, specifically wellness and mental health influencers, those who are always about human rights and Black Lives Matter and things like that, they didn't post it about that. Now, I also want to mention the other humanitarian crisis which is in Congo. I'm sure you know about that, but kids in Congo are exploited. Adults as well are exploited for cobalt mining. And it's just painful to watch. It's very, very painful to watch. And now you may tell me that, oh, if you got from social media and you don't post about that anymore, it means you're a loser. I don't think I'm a loser, but I don't want to fight with the wine. It's very hard to fight with the social media algorithm. And I would rather take my content to YouTube, to a Medium blog, to other platforms, you know? And this gets me to my second reason. The other reason is that social media alone is not enough for personal brands. I mean, if you want to build a personal brand around your interests and things like that. Dan Coe talks about long form content and the importance of it. Doing that with short form content 
with just short form content. Sometimes a reel with a caption is just not enough to cover your full message. And I think I need to get to the other reason. Reason three. Why did I show five fingers? <laughs> reason three. <laughs> three is the fact that you cannot post your photos anymore to Instagram. I mean you can, but they just get less and less engagement. You need to be very consistent with reels. As a photographer and artist, this is fucking hard, especially if you have multiple hobbies. I mean, for Darbuka, I need to shoot video, but for showcasing my art and my photography, I really wish to post more photos. I posted a lot of photos, but it's not enough where you are not consistent with the reason. So this gets me to reason four, which is fucking interesting. I quit social media because of stalkers. Stalkers, ghosters, orbiters, you name it. Social media is so superficial when it comes to personal connection. I'm on in a fuju. I don't know if I pronounce it well in English, but I feel the need for deeper connections and to be more vulnerable in a relationship, whether this is platonic or romantic, but I'm not interested in romantic relationships, so whatever. I would talk mostly about platonic relationships because it was a headache. It was a fucking headache. There are only two deep connections that I made out of social media and that kind of resisted in time, but one of them faded away too. To make this video shorter, I will straight up tell you that I attracted a lot of avoidant people through social media. People that came to me and trauma dumped me and um, tell me that yeah, we're good friends but long distance and that we will meet and blah 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 then ghost me, disappear, then reappear again, me forgiving them, and then ghosting again. I will tell you one of the stories. I had a friend long distance. To be honest, it is possible that for her it started like a crash on me. I'm not really sure. I was 50 at that time. I think we trauma bonded because we bonded over the physical loss of a mutual friend that died of stroke at 50. And we used to talk a lot, we used to send videos to each other. We were of the same nationality, but she just lived in another country. This was for two years. And then she randomly disappeared after I told her that I have amygdalitis and that I can't swallow. And this made me believe that, bro, maybe I was so vulnerable or maybe I just was a burden to her. I didn't know what happened. I felt guilty. She also unfollowed me. And after two years, when I was 80, after I had my spiritual awakening and I've gone through the situation with the esophageal injuries, shit like that, she came back telling me that she has depression, an eating disorder, and things got rough for her. And of course, my response to be very supportive of her, to be very emotionally available and supportive and to forgive her and trust her again. I even told her that, okay, I'm really sorry for what you've been through and I'll try to trust you again. She proceeded to ghost me again because I was so concerned about her. I think she was in a really dark place and I know how it's like to be there. I reach out to her again. I break the no, co the no contact. And she told me that other thing happened. She lost a family member. Again, of course, I was there to support her emotionally. Then boom, ghosted again. And I reached out again on her birthday. So yeah, I told her happy birthday and things like that. And a year. I think it's been like six months since I've never saw anything from her. Despite so, she still continued to post stories and stories with other people. And I want to mention that she didn't follow me back when she 
break the no contact and reach out and apologize. And I'm sorry, I don't know what's wrong with my throat. <coughs> so this wasn't the only case with the ghost, especially from really, really close people. And people whom, some people I knew that they had mental health problems. I don't know how to explain how I felt. I think I did felt responsible for their emotions and for their reactions. And I felt like I should fix them and their self-esteem issues if they have that. Or just their avoidant attachment. Let's be clear, I have a disordered attachment too. But I'm not doing that to people, especially to people who have been there for me and who aren't fake snakes, like one of my ex-best friends. Another story. This story is about stalking. Who was my biggest bully in high school? I was 50 at the time. Our friendship lasted for two years, I think. And she has been extremely emotionally abusive. Like, she would compliment me one day and then the next day she would criticize everything about me. She would gossip about me to other people and come up with stupid stories and just as you imagine a normal bully. Once I've break no contact, once I've cut her off, and I must admit that I ghosted her and ignored her at school, and I felt bad for that because I was essentially passive aggressive. Yeah, did I forget? I wasn't avoidant, right? Because I said before that I had a disorder attachment, but I'm not like that. I'm not avoidant, let's be clear. But in the past, I avoided conflict with the people who hurted me the most. And I don't think that's really toxic. I mean, if you have someone that just bullies you constantly and things like that, I don't think it's wrong to ghost them. But I think it was wrong in my case because I should have poke out to her and tell her this is fucking wrong. Yet she knew it. And then when we talk, I forgive her. So, and then after I got sick and I lost 50 kilograms, I started talking shit in my face about my fucking weight. And that's when I unfollowed her. It was the last year of high school. And since then, she still stalks me with her group of friends. She still stalks my social media. She sent a mutual friend in my DMs to ask about me. I won't even talk about the mutual friend because she was just a snake. And you might tell me, well, why you don't block those stalkers? Well, don't you think that those stalkers will make fake accounts? Or don't you think that they also, maybe they still talk to other classmates that still follow me? And I don't know which is the snake right now, like, which is which? I don't know. I think she has, like, one, two, three, four, five friends that still follow me. Okay, now, you might tell me, like, hey, you could have created new accounts and shit like that. Why would I? Seriously, why would I? Like, I spent so much time working on this account and I don't want to... I don't know how to explain this. Like, yes, I've worked on this account. I had a very beautiful, aesthetic, creative feed, but I don't want people to ever find me again on social media, especially those kind of people. And if they find me on YouTube or medium.com, fuck it, I don't care. Even if you find me on YouTube, it's not like you can message me directly or shit like that. Because she also came into my DM and another friend told me, oh, hey, respond to her. She told you happy birthday. It's bad luck if you don't. I responded to her. Thank you, stupid Francesca. Thank you. What the fuck? Why am I so stupid? I thought to myself, but for real, I must talk about the other group, Orbiters. And if you know, I don't think most of you heard about orbiting, but maybe you, th you think that this happens only in the dating culture. But no, this happens with friends as well. Friends that orbited me, they ghosted me, but they still watch my stories every day, every day, every day. I understand some of them, yes. Probably we've outgrown each other and things like that, but I don't trust people enough. I swear to God, I don't want to feed their ego. Like they seeing me, even if I have a glow up, 
And I tell you, I had multiple blow up throughout my adolescence and even my first two adulthood years. I don't want to be in their fucking face, showing them my life, where I am, what I do, what I work and things like that. And now we get to the other reason. At what number are we? The reason five? Reason five? Yeah, I don't know. Or an evil eye. Now, if you don't really believe in that, you can skip that part. But I think that jealous people can really send you evil eye. And I have some stories of that. I've worked for an American company. If you don't know where I am, I'm from Eastern Europe. And some people there were like, my God, how did you find this work? How come you work for an American company where you didn't even start university? Because I started working for them before I started university. I had my digital marketing certificate from Google. A digital garage it was before. Right now, I don't know how it's called. But when one of my neighbors were very surprised about this, and they told this to my mother, like, how? Can she teach my son to do this? And my mother was like, does he know English? And he was like, no. And she was like, then I don't know. He can do that, obviously. And the next day, I basically laid myself off. I've quit. And the reasons were multiple. I've been misclassified as an independent contractor. But then I realized that most foreign companies do this to people from Eastern Europe, Indians, people from Philippines, Thailand, Asians, things like that. The manager was the same nationality as me, but she was incredibly toxic. I had reasons to quit. But specifically, I didn't really want to quit at that time, but she had a rage outburst. I couldn't take it anymore. I had a lot of pain in my head. I had problems with cysts, with, with headaches. I didn't want it at that time because, you know, my family was specifically in a more complicated financial situation. But I think that Eli is specifically because some of the people that followed me, they knew about this shit. I even remember one of my ex-friends, after I refused her, when she suggested me that I should get into the hookup culture, I told her, no, it's against my morals. I don't see people as objects. I also want to conserve my creative energy, transmuting it towards something that mattered for me. And she then proceeded to post at close friends things about witchcraft and voodoo and shit like that and evil eye and I was like, damn, I won't get into more stories but some followers can really be energy vampires. I swear to God, they can be energy vampires.